you should have the stripes drawn on your cloth and you need to set that aside someplace where it can dry while you begin to carve your design for your um, symbols on your dinker cloth. And remember when you're deciding on your design um, you should be thinking about a person. So these traditionally showed the characteristics or personality of a person that has passed away, a loved one that has passed away. Um, some students have created them about loved ones that have passed away or maybe a pet that they have lost or something like that. Um, or you can think of a loved one that's still alive that you want to create something to honor them. So to begin, I take um, my potato and I am going to take that slice and I'm going to actually just trace it on some scrap paper. This is just a piece of of scrap that I had laying around and I'm going to trace it so I know the size that I have for my design and then on this spot that I trace I can draw my design the symbols that I'm going to use so for my symbol I think I'm going to create um, the symbol for forgiveness so I'm going to draw it on here just how I want it and this is kind of like a practice one, so if you mess up, you can just draw right over top of it and draw it the way you want it. So I'm going to draw out my design so that I like it. Remember, if you don't like the way it looks on the paper, then you need to erase it and, and try again, fix it, because if you don't like it on the paper, you're not going to like it the way it prints either. So this is the, the symbol for forgiveness. This is a traditional symbol. I'm going to also add a little bit of my own touch to it, um, give it my own um, meaning. So I'm going to create... Um, I think I'm going to do circles because I like how they're, they're never ending. They're continuous. So I think of this person as having like, you know, continuous love for those around her. So I'm going to create some circles around it to give it a little bit of my own meaning, my own symbol along with that traditional symbol. So I have my design now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out of the paper. Just like that. So you can go ahead and cut yours out. Remember, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video, take the time to draw your design, and then come back to it. So then I'm going to take and I am going to, oh I had a little dirt on the potato there. So I'm going to take and put this paper on top of my potato design, or on top of my potato to create the design. And I'm going to use a toothpick and I'm just going to poke um, around my design to kind of mark where different things are. So I'm going to start by poking these circles. You have to make sure you hold that paper in place so it's not moving around. Um, otherwise your design is going to be skewed a little bit. It's not going to look right when you're done. So you have to press kind of hard to get it through the paper and the potato, but it's not too bad. You should be able to just poke them in there. If your toothpick starts to get dull, mine's starting to kind of bend, I'm going to flip it over and use the other side. If you kind of angle the toothpick a little bit, it helps it poke through too, actually. So I'm going to hold it down, and you can see that it's got little marks in there. They're kind of hard to tell in the video, but there's little marks where the holes are. So I have those holes, and then I'm going to do the same thing to trace around the edges of my design, like to um, poke the holes where my design is going to be to help me draw that on there too. So I'm going to just kind of poke around this design. You can see my paper starting to tear, but I can still see where the design is, so I can poke around it as it's getting wet the paper's tearing but you can see how I'm poking holes through it um, I'm poking holes because it's a lot easier than trying to drag it across it to make that design so I'm just going to keep poking the holes around to get the very basic edge of the design my toothpick's starting to get dull so I'm going to switch it to a new toothpick 
and then I'm going to keep going around, get that whole design in, and you can poked in there already. And I'm going to do the same thing around the other side, and it's poking, and it's pulling up that paper, but as long as I'm following my design, it doesn't really matter if that paper comes off, because I'm going to have the design poked into it by the time it's all gone anyways. So I'm just going to keep poking around, following the design, just like that. Again, if the paper comes off, it doesn't really matter as long as you can follow the design around in my last step there. Now I've got my whole design on, so all this part that is coming off of the paper, I can just pull that right off. Get all those little flakes of paper off the potato. I can throw that piece away. And now, if you look closely at the potato, you can see I have all of the design is poked in there with holes. You can kind of see some holes here that show. So I'm actually going to take my toothpick and make some of those holes a little bigger so I can see them better. And I can use some of my other tools as well to create these. So, for example, these holes at the top, I have my fork that I can use to make holes going in there. Um, I also have um, an old pencil that is no longer um, that is no longer working because the end is um, broken off of it. So I could use that. I have a straw to make bigger circles. If you wanted to make big circles, I'll show you in this one. You can take the straw and you can twist it in there like that. And you can see how it makes a big circle design. Um, and then I have a plastic fork, I mean a plastic knife that I can use to cut so I can cut away some of this design that's in here. And you can see it's not actually cutting all the way through, but it's making a big indent in it. And that helps um, carve away those parts because if there's an indent, the ink won't print in those spots. So I can use that knife to kind of carve that away. You can see right here how I've carved it away. And I can use the toothpick to carve it away. So whichever tool works best for you, you can use that to start carving away parts of the potato. I think I like the toothpick on here. It seems to be working well to get some of those pieces out. So I'm just using the toothpick and dragging it through there and getting out bits of it to create my design the way that I want it. It's kind of like carving a pumpkin almost. So you're just making little indents into it. You're just not going all the way through the potato. You're just making it deep enough like your, um, like a stamp when you're stamping um, using the rubber stamps and you have it has indents in it to make the parts that don't print. So I'm digging away these inside parts. I'm going to do the same thing on this wing part here. And I'm going to keep going with it. Got some little bits of paper I'm going to dig out of there too. And I think I'm going to use, um, I have this little piece of a fork here. I'm going to use this to help dig out a little bit wider area. Go around the edges there. Takes it out a little deeper, a little bit wider. Getting all that out of there. I mean, very careful because if you if you dig it too much or too close together, it will actually take out whole chunks, and you don't necessarily want that because then it's not going to look like how you intended it to look. So I'm going to carve this out all the way around. It looks like I have this little part of the wing left to carve. Be careful not to carve parts that you don't want in your design because anything that you carve is going to show up in your final print. So I'm carving it out. And 
I've got just a little bits left in here. I have to kind of dig out. And then I'm going to use this little part of the fork to um, make these holes a little wider, the ones that I made around the outside. And I'm going to just poke them in there and twist it to make those holes a little bit bigger so that hopefully they'll show up better in my final design. Just go through and twist it and you can continue carving yours however it works best for you. Whatever tools you need, if you need to cut parts off, if you need to um, carve with a piece of a fork or a toothpick or an old pencil, just don't use the new pencils. Use one of the old ones. Ask Mrs. Andrews if you need one. She has old ones you can use. You can use a straw. You can see it's getting some juices out, so before we print, we're actually going to put it on a piece of paper towel to get some of that water off so that it prints a little better. But for now, it doesn't matter until we go to print it. So I'm just making sure those holes are big. If, if you have really tiny little parts, little tiny details, it's going to be harder to make the print really turn out the way you hope. So you can see now I've got the design dug out in there. I've got the holes around the edges. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of my paper towel. Piece of paper towel. And I'm going to fold it over a couple times. And I'm going to place this with the design side down on the paper towel. And just kind of pat it down. That's going to help get some of that extra moisture off of there. And then I'm going to leave it set just like that. And I'm going to go and get my cloth that I printed those lines on earlier. So let's put the cloth down. And um, I also need that brayer with the ink that I'm going to use or the paint that I'm going to use. So you're going to be very careful and you're going to use this brayer. This is to spread the ink out evenly and make it a little thinner so it's not all in one big puddle. Um, it'll make it print easier. So I'm going to take and I'm just going to roll this gently to kind of move my ink around and prepare it so that it's not all just one massive puddle in the middle. So that when I go to dip my potato in it, it doesn't like swim in a puddle of paint. <laughs> so I'm going to move that around. And then I am going to get my potato and try it out. So the first thing you should do is test it on a piece of paper before you print it on your cloth so that you can see if your design worked out. So I'm going to press my potato on the paint here. I'm going to kind of move it around to make sure I get it everywhere. And then you can turn it over. You can see I missed this whole middle section. If it's not coming off on there, you can actually use the brayer, the roller, and roll the ink onto it to get that whole design. You can see I'm still missing part in the middle there. The potato is not going to be perfectly even, so you're going to want to make sure you get all those parts on there. I'm going to roll it out, and then I'm going to try printing it on the paper and see how it prints. So you can see it still um, needs a little bit of work. Let's try it one more time over here, and this time I'm going to make sure I press down everywhere. That'll help it print a little better. And that printed much better. So the holes around the outside are showing up, but they're not quite um, showing up quite as much as I wanted them to. 
So I think I'm going to dig those holes out a little more. I'm going to use the same tool and I'm just going to dig them in there a little more. I might actually even turn it over and use the thick side to make the holes. You can see why it's important to test it on the paper first because I wouldn't have known that that wasn't going to work until I tested it on the paper. So now I have a chance to fix my design. And I can go back over it and make those holes bigger so that they'll print better. I'll make sure I get all, all those pieces. You can go ahead and test yours out see if it works and then make any adjustments you need to make. You're the artist, you need to look at your design, test it, print it, see how it works and if it's not working, adjust it. See what you can do to change it, see how you can make it better. So I'm gonna adjust my design Dig all those parts out. And you have to remember these are being carved out of a potato. <laughs> They're not going to print perfectly, and they're not going to print the same every time. They're going to print a little different every time. So it's okay if it's not perfect, but you want to be able to tell what your design is, be able to tell um, the different details you added, even if they're not exactly the way that you drew them, because it's never going to look the same as you drew them if you're printing, right? But just make sure that you don't just have a blob in it to show the main idea, right? I think I've almost got it. I'm going to do one more big circle. Get all those pieces out and then use that paper towel and get all that water out again. Really press it together, get the water out as much as I can. And now let's try printing again. I'll go to a clean spot in my paper. I'm going to roll out some ink and I think it worked best when I rolled it on there with the brayer. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to roll it on here. Make sure I get the whole thing covered. Every spot. Get some more ink on there. Just make sure you're rolling slowly with this brayer. If you roll too fast, it'll spray you. Or it'll spray the stuff around you. And then I'm going to test it again. Let's see how it turns out this time and I'm going to press it on the back side make sure I get everywhere and then oh, that turned out much better you can see most of it looks like a little bit had some um, extra paint in there and what you can do before you print it actually if you look at it and see that there's some extra paint in some spots you can actually take and dig out some of that so that it doesn't um, print in your final one. I'm going to try printing one more time with this, see if it has enough ink left to print another a second design. So I'm going to press really hard on it again. Make sure I get it everywhere and it turned out pretty well. Not great um, in that second time, so it looks like I'm going to have to ink it up every time I want to print it. But I think that design's pretty good. It's not perfect, like I said. But um, it's pretty good. I think right in this edge here, it looks like there's a spot that needs to be carved out a little more. And then I think I'm ready to print it. So you can continue to do your practice prints until you get it the way you want it. Make sure it turns out so you can actually see what the design is. 
and then you can go ahead and print your design on the cloth. So that's what we are going to do next. So let's try it out. So I'm going to roll the ink just like I did before. Put some on my potato. And it's best if you do this not above your cloth. I have to do it above my cloth just because my workspace is so small. But if you have enough room that you can do it next to your cloth and then move to your cloth, that is best. So now I'm going to very carefully make sure I'm looking at this and I see that there's some spots that there's a little more than I wanted in there. So I'm going to use this little toothpick tool and see that this paint comes out of these little spots in here where there's a little much before I print it just because I want to try to get it as nice as I can. I have to work kind of quick because I don't want the paint to dry, but I also want to make sure that my print actually is going to show up the way I want it. And then I'm going to try printing it. I'm going to press it down, make sure I press it, push down everywhere, being careful not to slide it. I'm just pressing down, straight down, not moving it at all. And let's check it out. Oh, that turned out pretty nice. So I'm going to keep going. And if you need to add more paint to your, to your plate or your tray, in order to um, keep going, you can do that. So I'm going to add a little more paint, roll it with the brayer, and then begin the process again. So I'm going to roll it on there, and I'm going to very carefully place it next to it. Actually, I'm going to place this one below it, I think, and very carefully set it down. And I push. And then check it out. Those are turning out pretty nice. I like them. I'm going to do the same thing again. And I'm going to fill in this whole square with the same design. That's what they typically do. Each square would have a, the same design. It might have the same design in the whole thing. Or just this square is one design and this square is another design. So this square is going to kind of be my square that represents forgiveness and this person's ability to forgive people. That one looks like I didn't press it down quite enough in that one corner so I'm going to make sure I'm a bit more careful about pressing it down this time. this process for the other squares so I can use the same print to print all of them or the other options are you can create another one if you want to create another print for these maybe you want to represent something else um, or you can see other people that are also making a dinker class maybe they have a different symbol that represents something that you think um, would also represent your person and you want to add one or two of their designs to your project as well. Maybe you could talk to them, say, hey, I have this design for forgiveness. Do you want to um, use it in yours? Maybe I could use your design in mine. I want to to use that same design in mine, and maybe I could use it to, to print on mine. Because these are prints, they're kind of like stamps. You can use them over and over again. Um, and then at the end of the day, they're a potato. So you can toss it in the trash when you're done with it, OK? So um, think about what those different things are going to represent and print your designs.